Welcome to part 3 of my Airfoil Labs King Air 350 tutorial videos. In this video, we will take a look at the following checklists and procedures. Descent Approach Before landing After landing And shutdown For the sake of simplicity and time, I will not go into detail of calculating top of descent as the focus is on checklist usage and operating procedures. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there to assist with top of descent calculation and VNAV assistance, although VNAV is not an autopilot function in the Airfoil Labs King Air 350. In the case of the dual GTN 750 configuration, there is a top of descent alert and VNAV profile option in the menu. Simply input the desired flight path angle and a real-time vertical speed target will be displayed to achieve the upcoming altitude restriction. It is up to the pilot to maintain the proper vertical rate of descent. Vertical track. We are approaching our top of descent, so let's engage the descent mode, enabling a 1500 foot per minute descent. Adjust the power as necessary to maintain maximum forward airspeed, or as instructed by ATC if you are flying online. Use the vertical speed mode to increase or decrease the rate of descent. Each click up or down on the thumb wheel is 100 feet per minute. Descending through flight level 180, complete the descent checklist. Pressurization, as required. Set the cabin altitude to destination field elevation plus 500 feet. Altimeters, set. Recog lights, on. Auto feather, armed. Window defog, as required. Cabin signs, as required. Descent checklist complete. No lower than 10,000 feet, complete the approach checklist. Approach briefing, complete. Cabin signs, set. External lights. We typically turn on all lights except the landing and taxi lights since those are attached to the nose gear. Nav FMS, set for approach. Approach speeds slash VREF, as computed. Ice protection, as required. In range call, not applicable. Passenger seats and tables, checked. Approach checklist complete. We are approximately 11 nautical miles from Burbank on a vector for the ILS to runway 8. The localizer frequency is tuned and the final approach course is set. I recommend joining the final approach between 160 and 180 knots, unless instructed otherwise by ATC. Press NAV to capture just the localizer and verify a green LOC1 on your electronic attitude director indicator. Once cleared for the approach, press the approach button and verify the correct modes are active and armed. We should see APPR in green and GS in white. GS will remain white until the autopilot captures the glide slope where it becomes active and turns green. When the glide slope is active, select the flaps to approach. Adjust power to maintain 150 to 160 knots. No later than glide slope intercept, select gear down. At glide slope intercept, set the missed approach altitude in the altitude preselector. Next, complete the before landing checklist. Landing gear, down 3 green. Landing taxi lights, on. Flaps, 15 set, 15 indicated. Props, full forward. Radar terrain, as required. Environmental bleed air, low. Surface de-ice, as required. Flaps. Verified down. Autopilot Yacht Amp. Off. Before landing checklist complete.
40 knots. Once clear of the runway and workload permitting, complete the after landing checklist. Upon reaching your parking spot, complete a shutdown flow. Parking brake, set. Avionics master, off. Environmental control system, off. Condition levers, fuel cutoff. And prop levers to feather. Then complete the shutdown checklist. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. I hope these videos have given you a little more insight on how it's done in the real world, and the checklist that I have provided will improve efficiency and safety for your Airfoil Labs King Air 350 flights.